What a finish to Game 7 between the Raptors and the Sixers as Kawhi Leonard's game winner with a very friendly bounce, I might add, propels the Raptors to the Eastern Conference Finals. What is going on, y'all? Fast Sports Talk back at it with another video talk and, of course, some NBA. And as you guys can tell, I am fired up because, my God, the best thing in sports is a Game 7. And we got two amazing Game 7s. First with the Blazers and the Nuggets, and then now with the Raptors and Sixers. And if the Houston Rockets uh, were competent enough, we could have had three Game 7s between the Rockets and the Warriors. But I digress. The point is, here to break down and talk about the Raptors and the Sixers Game 7 and, and talk about, of course, the uh, Eastern Conference Finals, which is now set between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Toronto Raptors. So I'm going to basically talk about the Eastern Conference Finals, but real quick, just recap on what exactly happened in this game, in this matchup, and break it down from there. So with that being said, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe down below. Turn on my post notifications, all that. You don't want to miss out. Follow me on my social media links down below for all that. I don't want to wait any longer. Let's get right into it. First things first, okay? I picked the Sixers in this series, and I'm going to own up to it because, again, I was wrong. But if you guys remember, I said something very specific if you guys paid attention. I said, I am picking the Sixers to win this series in six games. And the reason why I didn't pick the Sixers to win this series in seven games was because Toronto had, ha had home court advantage. And I said, Philly cannot beat Toronto in Toronto or I don't want to bet on that. And that is why I couldn't do it. And you saw me and why the reason I picked Philly to win in six games and not seven because home court matters and it showed up today against uh, the Toronto Raptors who of course won at home and at the very end of course the Sixers were down by four at, a po at one point and then uh, you know you had a big turn of events with Jimmy Butler making that layup and then Kawhi Leonard hit a two and then after that you had Kawhi Leonard get the ball point being is the Raptors were really in control. Not to say the Sixers couldn't win that game. They could. They had blown opportunities. Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler really didn't show up. They both were awful in this game. I know Joel Embiid's stat line looks good with 21 points and at like 11 rebounds, but he got four turnovers, shot 30, less than 35% from the field, something like that. Jimmy Butler, I believe he had just, he had less than 20 points. Uh, and he also shot the ball very, very poorly in this game. So, Tobias Harris was the only one playing in this game. And Ben Simmons, of course, he's been, uh, you know, pretty mediocre outside of one good game six in this entire series. So point being is the two best players on the Sixers didn't really show up until the second half. And Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid and the Sixers were still in this game. That is why I had picked them in this series, because I'm telling you, with the Toronto Raptors, Kawhi Leonard had 41 points. And if Kawhi Leonard even has one bad game, the Raptors are losing that game Without a doubt, they are that heavily reliant on Kawhi Leonard. Go look at the numbers. Go look at the plus minus. Every single player on the Raptors, not named Kawhi Leonard, suffers when Kawhi Leonard is not on the floor. That is how dependent they are on Kawhi Leonard. And good for them that Kawhi has shown up and he has balled out this entire series. He was the best player on the floor by far every single game. But Kawhi Leonard can't afford to have even one bad game. Uh, with the Toronto Raptors or they lose absolutely okay the second leading score after Kawhi's 41 points I think it was Serge Ibaka with like 17 okay so it was bad for Toronto outside of Kawhi Leonard even Siakam who's been their second best player in the series only had 11 points I believe so point being is there was one formula for the Raptors to win this game and that was to Kawhi Leonard go off every single game and he went off every single game okay uh and they won the series and that's all she wrote, folks. Honestly, at this point, with the Sixers, you just didn't have the right guys show up every single game. Joel Embiid showed up sporadically in the series. Jimmy Butler, for the most part, was shown in every game. Didn't show up in Game 7. Tobias Harris was okay. Ben Simmons, outside of Game 6, didn't really show up. J.J. Redick finally had a good game, but the rest of the games, he was awful. So, again, all four didn't click at once, and that was one of my concerns with this Sixer squad is their chemistry was not going to be very strong as they learn to play with each other. But unfortunately now, there's some tough decisions that need to be made with Jimmy Butler coming back or Tobias Harris coming back because both are free agents. But again, I digress over there. Point being is Kawhi Leonard. 
Those are the only two words you need to know for why the Raptors won this game and won this series, okay? If not, it would have been the Sixers winning this pretty handily, and that is why I had picked them. So I don't feel too bad about my uh, pick. It literally took a Kawhi Leonard game winner at the very end to win that. And even with my Denver pick in the Western Conference, it literally took CJ McCollum's historic effort to win that, and it went to seven games. So again, honestly, it was uh, it could have gone either way, but point being is, that was my pick. Now let's talk about the Eastern Conference Finals matchup and talk about the Bucks versus the Raptors. So take everything I just said about the Raptors and apply it here in this series. And I'm telling you right now, the Milwaukee Bucks are licking their chops and are happy to face the Toronto Raptors over the Philadelphia 76ers because they know to stop the Toronto Raptors, you stop Kawhi Leonard. And again, easier said than done. But my point is, in this series, when you take a look at both teams and you take a look at the fact of how reliant Tor Toronto is on Kawhi Leonard, you can probably tell what way I'm leaning towards in this series, okay? First and foremost, uh, Milwaukee has home court advantage in this series, so that is a big plus for them. Uh, second, I believe they are a better defensive team than Toronto. You can go check the numbers. I believe it's close, but Toronto, uh, Milwaukee is the better defensive team. And number three, we see which team is less reliant on which guy. I trust the secondary options on the Milwaukee Bucks more than I do with the Toronto Raptors. I'm talking about guys like Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, and of course Malcolm Brogdon is now back. So he should be back in the fold and in the starting lineup in this series. Uh, not to mention the fact that you've still got guys like Eric Bledsoe and off the bench George Hill has been playing very well. And, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Point being is... Those secondary options for Milwaukee, to me, are more reliable and have shown up more often than Toronto has. So, again, matchup-wise, you got guys like Bledsoe against, uh, you know, uh, Lowry. I'm taking Eric Bledsoe. Kyle Lowry has been pretty pedestrian in the playoffs. Uh, then you'll probably have Malcolm Brogdon coming off his injury against a guy like a Danny Green. I'll take Malcolm Brogdon. So, again, that's advantage to Milwaukee there. Uh, Chris Middleton against, you know, it's probably going to be Pascal Siakam because I think Kawhi Leonard's going to be on Giannis. And again, that could be a wash. But again, Chris Middleton was an all-star this year. So it's a push. Then Giannis versus Kawhi. You can call that a push. Lopez versus Gasol. Maybe I'll take Marc Gasol in that instance. But you can kind of see the roster favoring Milwaukee more so than Toronto. So point being is there are multiple ways Milwaukee can win this series. You double Kawhi, you, you deny him the ball, you force other guys to beat you. But there's only one way Toronto wins this series, and that is Kawhi goes nuclear every single game. So I am taking the, the prior. I'm taking Milwaukee as the team that I believe is more balanced, as I believe the team is better, the home court advantage. Give me the Bucks to win this series in six games over the Toronto Raptors. But props to Toronto and props to Kawhi Leonard for getting this far. That's just how I feel about it. Let me know what you guys think. Who do you have in this series in the Eastern Conference Finals? Give me the Milwaukee Bucks in six games. Leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree. As always, thanks for watching.